Hi everyone, Blake Jones here. In this video, we're going to do a deep dive into Windows tracking with Resolve 19. So we're going to try it using the standard Windows tracking functions, and we're also going to try it using the IntelliTrack functions. And this is a great way for you to actually identify whether you actually want to go with the Resolve Studio or you want to stay with the free version. And I'm sure once you see the advantages of using IntelliTrack, you will see the reasons why you should immediately go out and get the studio version of Resolve. So without further ado, let's have a look at it. Now the best way for getting good tracking when you're doing this, just using standard tracking techniques, I always take the softness out of the window and it can be reapplied later. You'll get much better tracking response then. So what I'm going to do is just make this smaller and come over here and do like so. Okay. Now there's a lot of textures here, so it's very possible that this tracking is going to start going awry very quickly. So I'll come over to my window tracker and let's come over at first is let's come over bracket forward. So as you can see here, it was totally got confused by the mountains. Let's try it backwards. You see it's got some of the airplane got in there, but then it got hooked on here. So basically what we want to do here is clear out all my keyframes that I have in this area because that's just going to make it much more difficult for us to do tracking. And then what we want to do is change this from clip mode into frame mode. And then what we can do here is just make it a little more difficult on ourselves. So let's make it a bit of a finite size. And then we come over here and we move the position a bit, bring this down, bring this down, bring this down, like so. Let's make the size a bit larger. Okay, that's fine. Then we can come back, select clip, and now we play that. And now all the corrections that we have made will be coming across. See the window gets slightly larger. It takes it all the way to the end. Okay, now if I want to add softness overall, then what I can do is since I'm in clip mode, instead of frame mode, it will take it through the entire duration of the shot. And so as you can see now, I can even add a correction in there if I want to. So as you can see there, it's coming across with this like so. So as you can see, I was had to manually add the points. If I tried to do this by using the cloud tracker, you'll see what happens here in the beginning. If I come up to here, come up something like this, bring this off. Take the softening out and then move it. As you can see here, it goes completely wrong. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear this out and let's come back to the beginning again. 
And let's use IntelliTrack for this. So we've got our three points identified, and now let's track it backwards. So now we've got our shot, which has been tracked using IntelliTrack and using our three reference points. He automatically uses that to navigate through the entire shot. This way I didn't have to put any keyframes at all in. Okay, so then what I could do afterwards, if I wanted to, I could also clean up this window as well. So if I wanted to, I could come over here and add a bit of more softening to it and change maybe the aspect a bit, you know, maybe the size to compensate for this area of the shot here. And if I wanted to, I could also keyframe that across and bring it in. Now, it's important to note as well that if you have some secondary object that can share the same tracking data, you can copy from one node to the other the tracking information by simply going up to the three dots you have here and select copy track data make your new node and window and then actually then come over and then select paste track data now if you need to make corrections this is your keyframe button that you have here and so all you have to do is once you get past the first area, change to from clip mode into frame mode, add your keyframe, make your change, and then go to the next one and do this until you get to a point where the system can actually change by itself, or as you say, continue the tracking by itself. Then you can take it back to clip mode and then track it to the end of the shot. But this, I find, is the easiest way of doing tracking in Resolve. Okay, um, when you've got things where people are walking uh, behind obstructions, or if you have different textures moving in the background, such as this shot, which is a problematic shot, that's when IntelliTrack really steps in to help fix the situation. I would not hesitate to recommend going for the studio version so this way you've got the AI tools at your fingertips and IntelliTrack does a really fantastic job. So basically what we've looked at here today is doing tracking the standard way and then trying to track it by putting our own keyframes together and then afterwards stepping in and using IntelliTrack to do this. So there we have it. For more information about training services, have a look in the comments below. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Think about subscribing to my Patreon. There are a lot of great perks there. And also, 
have a look at my website. There's a lot of great information there as well. Thanks a lot for watching.